Hello, good day. You're welcome to our physics class. In physics, we shall be looking at the topic machines. We'll aspects of the topic and then we'll go straight into solving questions. Now, machines are devices by which work can be done easily and more conveniently. So, in case you want to achieve a task and you would need so much of efforts or energy to carry out this activity, then you could look for a device which could reduce the efforts which is being applied in order to achieve in order to carry out the work or the task so when we are talking about machines now you've noticed that we've talked about the fact that you apply efforts and that effort will be needed to move perhaps a body through a distance and then we talk about a load which is being moved through a distance as well so what we are saying now is that when we are talking about about machines we can't forget the aspect of load and efforts this load needs to move a certain distance which we could represent as y and the effort is applied to move through a certain distance we can represent that with x this is distance moved by the load and this is the distance across which the effort is applied all right when we consider the ratio of our load to the efforts it gives us a new term which we call the mechanical advantage which is the ratio of load to efforts another name for mechanical advantage is also force ratio now when we consider the ratio of distance move distance across which the effort is applied which is x to the distance moved by the load we will come across would arrive at another term which is known as the velocity ratio so the velocity ratio is the ratio of distance moved by effort over distance moved by load from all this we are always trying to have an advantage whenever we are using a machine and that is the mechanical advantage and we can determine if a machine is assisting us to easily carry out the task which we want to achieve in measuring its efficiency and so we will say that the efficiency of a machine is equal to the mechanical advantage over the velocity ratio times 100 percent here we expect the mechanical advantage to be lesser than the velocity ratio to measure our efficiency we say mechanical advantage over velocity ratio times 100 and most times the mechanical advantage is lesser than the velocity ratio the mechanical advantage is equal to the velocity ratio now in this case meaning that the efficiency of the machine is 100 percent and there are no friction because it is the friction that mostly causes the mechanical advantage to be lesser than the velocity ratio when we consider that we are carrying out a particular work which is called the work output the work output is a multiplication of the load that we are carrying multiplied by the distance moved by this load that's how we derive our work output so we said work output is load multiplied by the distance moved by load then the work input talks about the effort you are putting in across a particular distance so the work input we said is the effort multiplied by the distance across which it, it is applied we could also use this to derive the efficiency of the machine so the efficiency of the machine will be the work that is being produced that is the work output over the work input multiplied by 100 so we are saying that we can get the efficiency using this formula or we could use mechanical advantage over the velocity ratio times 100 over 1 and what does this mean if you have an efficiency that is lesser than 100 it means that the work output is lesser than the work input likewise the mechanical advantage is lesser than the velocity ratio and 100 percent efficiency means that friction has been eliminated and some other factors but really do we have any machine that is 100 percent efficient well that's the question all right so next we look at the classes of machines machines are classified based on the kind of work that they help us achieve or carry out we have the lever we have the pulleys inclined plane the screw the hydraulic press the wheel and axle gears and so on now let's take note that there are some of these that are examples of another for instance the screw is seen as one of the modification of an inclined plane 
the gear is also seen as one of the modification of the wheel and axle so all these have their own modification now when we talk about lever something about lever is that it's it is represented sometimes with a bar and it has a point of five volt for the load and effort so meaning that when a load is attached here there may be an effort to balance it up so if we have a load here we have an effort to balance it up and we have three orders of lever we have the first order we have the second order and the third order when we are talking about the order we are talking about the arrangement of the efforts this point of pivot which is also called the fulcrum and also the load I'm saying that there are several arrangements of these three now in the first order this is a diagram of such where the fulcrum is at the middle such that when a load is applied here the body tends to move down and this tends to move up but if the load will be carried easily the efforts efforts could be applied to this side and the efforts applied will help to lift the load up and the fulcrum can be adjusted so if the fulcrum is adjusted towards this side we will find out that we would not need so much of effort to lift heavy load so it is all about adjusting the fulcrum in order to in order to achieve a mechanical advantage and a higher efficiency now examples of first other lever we have the crowbar we have the claw armor we have the plier so in this we have the fulcrum at the center next is the second order in the second order it is arranged such as fulcrum load and effort and in this case we have the fulcrum at the edge at any of the edges and then we have the load and also the effort this is the arrangement of second order lever an example of the second order lever we have the nutcracker the wheelbarrow and so on and then the third order lever we have the load effort and fulcrum and in this place the emphasis is on the effort being at the center so in this case we have a diagram as such the, the emphasis is on the efforts being at the center it may be acting upwards or maybe acting downwards but the important thing is that it is at the center and then we have our fulcrum over here all right so in the first last order we have we have the arrangement as load fulcrum efforts or it could be the other way around as effort fulcrum load the important thing is that the fulcrum is at the center and the second order we have the load at the center and in the third order we have the effort at the other example of third class third order lever include the forearm the forearm such as this the tongues that is the sugar tongues and so on 